podcast with another edition of My Marijuana Chronicles on behalf of My MMA News and brought to you by our good friends at O2 Vape. I'm being joined by my man Noah Cutter, BKFC fighter, and he's just as hard as they come, hard hitter, former kickboxer, former, former MMA fighter. I'm t- here to talk about my man with some cannabis. Noah, how are you, brother? Great, Adam. How you doing, bro? I'm doing great, man. It's uh, our second time talking. I'm glad we're able to talk this time a little bit more relaxed, not so much fight oriented and about the great, uh, wondrous plant of cannabis. So uh, first and foremost, man, I want to ask, when did you start getting into cannabis as far as therapeutic goes? Um, so I've always smoked, like even at a, a younger age, which I don't, I'll, I don't recommend to anybody whenever I talk to people about it, obviously, but uh from a super young age, I started smoking, but um, obviously when I got into mixed martial arts and stuff, that's when I really began to see a little bit more a bit behind smoking, what helps with different anxieties and pain and stuff like that, more so than just smoking to get high and have fun and have a laugh, you know what I mean? So I, obviously, the older you get, the more and more you begin to realize the beneficial properties of it and uh, the way it can help. And now that the stigma is, I mean, it's still somewhat there, but you know, it's obviously it's getting cleared with, I mean, tons of people getting into the sponsorship with CBD, that market is absolutely booming right now. And just with states getting knocked down left and left and right, as far as legalization goes, what do you think this means as far as long term in combat sports, because it become it's becoming more and more accepted. Um. Long term is, I think it's going to basically just, it's going to find its own spot in the sport. I mean, it doesn't make any sense for it to not to. I do believe in, um, I don't know if you follow it a little bit better than I do. I think for UFC now, they have it to where you can have medical, I think as long as you're cleared for medical, or maybe even if you live in a state where it's recreational, as long as you get cleared and you tell them that it's going to be in your system, then it's okay for it to be in your system. And it only makes sense seeing as how guys use it. A lot of guys, especially in MMA and bare knuckle, you know, bare knuckle boxing, all kinds of athletic sports, even non-combat sports, just athletic sports in general. Um, a lot of people use it for pain and anxiety and, and uh, stuff like that. And um, for decades now, people have been allowed to use medications for that kind of stuff you know the same thing you're using a pill for anxiety it's okay for them to have it in your system as long as you tell the government you know as long as you tell the body that hey there's this in my system i use it for anti-anxiety it's fine so it doesn't make any sense for guys not to be able to smoke weed for the exact same thing and have it in their system and be able to fight because it's not you know, I remember the years when USC made it where it was the exact same as a steroid. So if you got popped with it in your system, it, you basically got punished just like it was a steroid. And John Jones can have cocaine in his system, and that's okay. Here's a 10-month punishment. You got weed in your system. It's down as a PT. Um, um, you performance know, enhancing. Performance enhancing drum, PED. And so, you know, here's a two, three, four, five-year suspension. So it's ridiculous and it's going to find a spot just like CBD has over the years. And, you know, you see a lot of places now in these stores where states are, it's not legal, the Delta eight thing going around. So it's, people are always going to find a way around it. And eventually recreational is going to be in every state and the majority of athletes already do use it. So I think it's just going to help more and more people use it. And you just took me to my next topic, man. We're talking about how many fighters actually use cannabis. A lot of people don't fully understand behind the scenes. I mean, I talk to a ton of jujitsu guys. I talk to BK. I mean, you name it, combat sports athletes. I talk to a lot. And I'd probably uh, say roughly 80% smoke or at least take some kind of topical tincture, anything as far as cannabis goes. They do participate in it. So the growth is being there, but or getting there, obviously. But my question to you, and I don't want to dig too far into your personal life, but what's your reason for getting into cannabis? What, what's your reason? Why do you utilize it still to this day? Well, I think definitely, you know, on a personal level, it just helps me, helps me relax, helps me, helps me be more calm, helps me have, I don't feel like I am a person that has 
high amounts of anxiety or anything like that. I wouldn't claim to be someone who has anxiety or has problems with anxiety outside of competition and sparring and things, normal situations that normal people would get a little anxious in. But as far as an overall anxiety, I don't believe I have. But with the situations like that with sparring, uh, I just find that it helps. And, you know, the same way that I find that, I found a lot of people that it doesn't help. And sometimes it makes other people more anxious and gives people, you know, more anxiety if they're already nervous doing something like sparring, then when they get high, they're going to become more nervous and it's not going to help in that sense. So it all just depends on the person. And uh, I know for myself personally, I guess it's obvious because I've always used to that uh, it, it just really helps me. It helps me stay relaxed. It helps me get through the day on a regular, helps me I stay super motivated. I never wake up in the morning and get high and I'm like, oh, I just want to sit around all day and not do anything. It's like, oh, I wake up, I eat, I get high, I do my workout, I hang out, get high again, and I go to the boxing gym and train. So uh, for me, it definitely helps. And then in the evening, you know, obviously with some Indica or something like that, that's just to help you relax. I mean, it's just, you know, nothing going on, just calm down and then that's just smoking you know that's not even getting into the uh like you were talking about the tinctures and the edibles and stuff like that 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 has its whole other you know healing properties and everything else that it helps with so i'd imagine being i mean obviously taking the gloves off cbd being a huge beneficiary for your hands i mean taking the gloves off i mean it's not going to get any more bone on bone contact is that have you i mean we've talked about conditioning of your hands before but have you started utilizing maybe even just like a nice little cbd just bam throw it in there um yeah i started using cbd every day um especially ever since i got hooked up with fusion you know they're my for overall cbd product i uh you know i always use my fusion stuff and yeah ever since uh they sponsored me and i've gotten to bksc and kind of got around them more um i come to find that i'm using it every day you know a tincture or the cream on my end that's not even usually my hands a lot of times even from hand conditioning i just did hand conditioning did some knuckle push-ups today but um you know, just being sore. If you're sore, my knees, my knees usually get sore from, you know, doing road work and boxing, jogging, jumping rope, stuff like that. Um, so it really helps. And uh, when you mix it with the THC too, you know, then you can start getting into your right mixture and feeling, you know, like I said, it gets to, you get past just getting high and then you start getting the whole nother levels of like the way that it helps your body, helps your mind. And uh, yeah. And yet again, just took me to my next point with talking about the anatomy is different for everybody and everybody's going to have what works for them and what doesn't work for them. Like you were saying, some people get more paranoid. Some people, they have that, that first phase of getting high. But I mean, when you work past that and take it in for the medicine as it is, for example, um, I mean, when I first w got my medical card in Delaware, it was to get off of anxiety, depression, medicine, all that, just because I didn't want to take all of those prescribed things that wasn't natural, right? So yeah. I was able to utilize cannabis in getting off of those, you know, uh, the Xanax, everything like that by, you know, two THC pills in the morning, and then, you know, maybe like a CBD puff, you know, Delta 8 puff at, you know, lunch. And so anyway, what I'm getting at is my regimen of getting through the day of my consistency that helps me be the best me. Do you have a regimen for you that you stick to to the T? <laughs> it's not a set regimen, but it's pretty much it's basically every day. Yeah, every day I wake up and I smoke. Um, depending on what I got going on, um, like you were saying, the, getting into a little bit more of the tinctures and the edibles and stuff like that, like if i have uh a planned event like something going on like last weekend we had the pay-per-view so i ate a little bit of edibles but then if i know that i'm going to be doing a lot of hard sparring i'll put some edibles aside for if i'm going to be extra sore or if i go the latest thing i've been doing lately is every time i go to a bkfc event and i'm going to be fighting i go ahead and make an order of edibles before i go because i know my hands and my face are all going to be hurt to shit. So go ahead and have them on deck. And then after the fight's over, have some 
have a few milligrams of edibles and go ahead and help that out. And the first time I did that in Miami, it was in Miami after my uh, fight with Francesco. And it was just like, I didn't realize how much pain I was in until after all my edibles were gone, like three days later, <laughs> I realized <laughs> once I stopped taking edibles, I was like, oh my God, I'm in so much pain because I've just been eating edibles for like two days, three days straight. And I was like, oh, I feel good. This ain't too bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And it's crazy too, man, because so many people, so many people, their first resort would be take a pain pill, take anything like that, which, you know, processing through the liver, you know, the, the detrimental of pain medicines that people will reach for first opposed to the natural option. It's just mind blowing to me. It absolutely just blows my mind. And I can't, I can't fathom it whatsoever. Yeah. Well, uh, once you got the CBD, once that began to come out a few years back, you know, it began to really show the benefits of doing that instead of, yeah, inflammation pills, ibuprofen, things like that, that, uh, take, that's like, uh, when I'm trying to quickly explain CBD to somebody, I'm, I usually tell them, like, as far as pain goes, I was like, it's kind of like an ibuprofen that doesn't do any damage to your organs, basically, like it helps with inflammation, but then it'll also help with anxiety and stuff like that and different things. And then, yeah, the, the harder pain pills, when you get into the THC and stuff, you just see, um, so many different stories about different fighters and things, you know, I think uh, Chris Lieben is a guy who's uh, been outspoken about his, his stuff with addiction. And, you know, as a fighter, you, you start doing, you know, you get some pills for your back or something one time after a fight and then you're doing oxycodone and then you're doing them every day. And then before you know it, you're addicted to opioids, you know what I mean? And I think a lot of that could be helped with people just getting into THC, CBD, smoking weed, smoking cartridges, different things like that. There's so much more things that are better for your body overall and addiction and things like that that can help in alcoholism too. You know, that's a big, I don't really have any personal experience with being addicted to pain pills or anything, but I definitely have been addicted to alcohol. And, you know, that's another thing fighters get into drinking to deal with pain, drinking to deal with your anxiety and things like that. And it's another one of those things you can get away from that does way worse things to your body that you can be just using CBD, using TAC, even to have fun. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to go get drunk off my ass. I can maybe just eat some edibles, you know, and have just as much fun as going out and drinking with all my friends and have no damage on my body, no hangover the next day and get up and train at 120 percent and and be fine. And not for nothing, like you were saying, it seems like the two options that are there uh, is the other option being alcohol, which can be a huge rabbit hole. I personally know quite a bit about that. But uh, so with those two being like similar, like seemingly the only two vices, it's only seemingly two because alcohol is the more legal one that is like, oh, well, OK, well, if you have a couple of drinks, that's completely fine. It is legal. Whereas that stigma that still trails marijuana, it's, you know. Most people now, they get past it. But what I'm getting at is it's so easy to take that, well, it's legal route. Why not have a couple of drinks? But with what you were saying and talking about some of the stigma that still trails with the, the lazy stereotype that often gets tagged with stoners. And I read a study recently that um, I believe it was more athletes smoke marijuana or were more active something along those lines but and then there's also the joe rogans that say if you're lazy it's because you're lazy it's a lack of discipline it has nothing to do with cannabis so what's your thoughts on all that yeah i know exactly what you're talking about i've seen that clip in a headline somewhere i think it was saying that yeah uh, the majority of people who smoke weed are more productive right, right. and more physical than the people who uh who don't smoke and uh yeah, that makes a lot of, it, it makes a lot of sense. And like you said, it makes a lot of sense. There's, there's no, uh, it's no coincidence. Like you said, like 70 to 80% of people that are doing combat sports are smoking. You know what I'm saying? These aren't lazy people by any means. You know what I'm saying? We, we work very hard and we, we have to be places. We have to do things. We have to exercise. We got to do this, this, and this. So to think that you can just get up and like I said, get high in the morning and just sit around and not do anything it's like it's totally impossible and impractical and um yeah i don't know um as far as 
Yeah, I know that that's bullshit. Basically, <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> people are plenty productive on marijuana. And like I said, if it, it, yeah, if you're not being productive, then it's probably because you're just already not a productive person. Or if for some reason weed is making making you not productive, it might be something going on, like we talked about before, with your genetics or with your your chemistry, the same thing that's making you anxious. You know what I mean? It might just be something in you that's making you smoke weed that just makes you not want to ever do anything. And um, it's definitely, yeah, it's probably something that's already lingering as you as a person. And uh, I definitely don't think it's going to hurt. And then the same thing I said, the indica and the sativa type situation, I try to steer more towards the indica than the evening because it does make me feel a little bit more relaxed, a little more drowsy or things like that. Whereas this, a sativa may make me feel a little more anxious or give me a little more energy, make my mind kind of work a little bit harder, which then in turn my body kind of want to get to moving around because you know i exercise and i work and i'm kind of already an anxious person anyway so uh i think it's all just about finding the right thing that's going to work for you but definitely when you see some of the athletes like like i said not even just combat sport athletes but some of the all-around athletes that win gold medals at olympics and things like that it's it's pretty hard to say that these people are people that are smoking are lazy people <laughs> I couldn't agree more. You couldn't have said it better, nail on the head. But my, another another trail end of it that has to has to come into play is food tastes 100% better on cannabis. Now, my question to you is: You fought at 155. You fought at 65 in the 70s. <laughs> what is it like cutting that weight when you have the munchies? You see that tasty treat on the side. What's that like? Um. You know, yeah, eating is always fun when you're stoned and it's fun to eat good stuff and it's fun to eat good edibles and get high. Mm. Um, but I don't know, when it comes to weight, I've just, I've never had a problem with with cutting weight or, uh, you know, I've actually cut what, been cutting weight before one time and was in a sauna and, uh, popped out of the sauna in my suit and then was smoking with a guy when I was sweating off cutting weight just to like mentally like put myself there to be like oh I'm just completely unbothered and I don't even care because <laughs> it, it really you know yeah once you go two days without you know eating and 24 hours without drinking any water and sweating your ass off you, you it becomes once you you I consider myself a pretty mentally tough person, so it's it's no problem at all for me to to be smoke. If I say if I sign that contract that says I'm going to be on that weight, then I'm going to be at weight. It don't matter. <laughs> now speaking of, do you have any fight news coming up? Whether I mean BKFC, I'm um, kickboxing, box. I mean you're you're predominantly a striker more so than when in MMA a ground fighter. So as far as striking goes, BKFC, any fight news? I don't have anything lined up right now, but um, I know they just wrapped up um, their first card in Alabama, and I'm still I'm still on. I think I probably got 30 more days on a uh, on my medical suspension from the last fight, from when I cut my nose with mm -hmm. uh, Caleb with that doctor stoppage, that bullshit in Biloxi. Um, but um, the last I heard was August was what my managers told me. So I don't know which cards are in August, but I would like to get in a little sooner. I've seen that cards coming up in Miami and I like fighting in Miami. I actually, out of the two BKSC fights that I've done, one being in Miami against a Miami fighter and one being in Mississippi against a Mississippi fighter, I prefer to fight in Miami and I kind of like the commission and the doctors and the surgeons and stuff like that over there a little bit better. So uh, well, I'm going to talk to him here pretty soon. I think that card's five or six weeks away. So I'm going to talk to the managers and talk to Nate and see if there's any way, if they need anybody at 65 or 75 and uh, start getting that weight in line. But um, nothing on the line, but they, they know that I'm always ready. They, they wanted me to work on my defense a little after that last fight. So that's what I've been doing. And they said August, so... If not Miami, then maybe we'll see something after Miami, but that's all I know. Any names you want? 
Um, so for one, I want to rematch Caleb Harris, if not immediately, then sometime down the road, because I feel like that fight, you know, obviously I feel like because it was stopped on me, I'm going to feel like it wasn't fair or whatever. But from an outside perspective, I feel like I wasn't losing the fight either. I felt like it was even going into the first round. We both hit each other the same amount of time. So I definitely want to rematch Caleb Harris. If I don't get it immediately, then maybe at the end of the year. But besides Caleb, I'd like to fight Brad Kelly at 65. Uh, my teammate from my management, Elvin, just fought him mm -hmm. to a five-round decision mm -hmm. and a loss. So we're both coming off a loss. I'd like to fight him. Or if not, if I can't get that, then I wouldn't mind fighting Zion Tomlinson. There's a couple times ever since I fought his dad, there's been talk about me and him fighting at 175. So he just got ranked pretty good at a good little spot with his win over Tyler Hill. And uh, I would definitely fight him at 175. And like I said, and again, anybody in Miami, anybody on the court, if it's 65, 75, they need somebody. If it's real short notice, it'll probably be 75. But if they give me a little bit of time, I could probably do 65. So it just depends on but those are the names that come to the top of my head. Now, would it mean anything? Is it anything more spectacular if you were able to take out father and son? Is that, does that do anything for you? Honestly, it doesn't do anything for me, man. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything. When they mentioned, they mentioned this fight a couple times ever since, like I said, I did the tell the line with his dad. They've mentioned it to me a couple times, and it doesn't really do anything for me. And that's actually what I told them is that it doesn't, you know, I guess this building and there's a parody or a story there, but from my perspective, you know, no, I'm not like, oh, I beat the dad. Now I need to go beat the son. <laughs> like that just kind of makes me look like a jerk in my opinion. If it's anything, it'd be from there in, you know, it'd be from Zion then like, oh, you fucking beat my dad. Now I'm going to beat you or something like that. You know what I mean? But even when I seen uh, Kane last time, because he was Zion's fight was on the same card as mine. And when I seen Kane at the fight, he was like, I don't give a shit about none of that. You know, I don't need anybody to defend. I don't need him to defend me, you know, uh, or avenge me or whatever. But I would do it. I would do it. And I damn sure do it to take that number three, 175 pound spot that they just gave him, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, so I want to start winding it down, man. I feel like I've taken enough of your Saturday and UFC is <laughs> going to start soon. But uh... Uh, that's why I wanted to get it. Done before the main part. <laughs> but uh, so a couple more questions, man. What do you think is the biggest misconception about weed and cannabis still that going into combat sports and athletes concern? Mm, definitely, like we talked about, man, the, the, I think the laziness. Um, I know one thing big overall is the, uh, the whole gateway drug thing you know I don't think I've ever you know I've known from where I, I live in northwest Florida in the panhandle and I know a lot of people that are drug addicts I know a lot of people that were my friends in high school that are now addicted to methamphetamine and stuff like that and I don't ever go back and trace it to oh it's because we were smoking weed in high school and now that's why those people are now addicts you know what I mean or even with the pill thing, you know, that that's a big thing where I'm at too, is people addicted to prescription pills. And, you know, you can be as, just as much of an addict on these opioids. People buy these pills and break them down and shoot them up just like heroin. And some of them are even stronger than heroin. And so uh, I think just the laziness and the gateway drug thing and the, the criminal thing. And, you know, like we didn't really get to talking about it much, but we both kind of touched base on the alcoholism. You know, I have we both, you know, have more personal experience with the alcohol and know, you know, that the, the troubles that that can lead to, you know what I mean? And the different roads that that goes down that can lead you to all kinds of trouble with the law and trouble with the personal problems and all kinds of things like that. So yeah, definitely, you know, not the laziness, not a gateway drug. And um, yeah, man, it just, it really does help. It really helps. It'll help a lot of athletes and it helps a lot of people. And I, I feel like we can both share this sentiment here because obviously you talking about your, your past with alcoholism and that was one of my big vices growing up. 
And it, mm -hmm. it, it, at a certain point, it seemingly took over and it went from the, you know, the parties to the college years to the after, after college, the happy hours. And it just, you know, like when life happens like that, the, the slippery slopes of things that are seemingly acceptable, you know what I mean? And what people take as the norm. And it's just so slippery of that slope that can take over. And I don't know about your experience or if you even want to bring it up, but it was after that and finally deciding I've had enough. I don't want to do this anymore was when I was talking to you was going through the struggles of the anxiety and depression from all the, the chemical imbalance and whatnot. So, and that's when I, I told the doctors, I'm, I'm not going to do this anxiety, depression stuff like cannabis. It works for me. I'm going to figure this out on my cannabis regimen. And I've never been happier in my life. So I, I, I can't say the same for alcohol or when alcoholism was heavily involved in my life. So I don't know your story per se, but yeah. I'd like, uh, I'll share a little bit. It's funny you say the slippery slope because I really like Jeremy Stevens' uh, interview that he did right before that fight. He, we didn't get to see it because he freaking, he pushed that guy and sprang his neck or whatever. But mm -hmm. there's an interview where he's talking about alcohol and being off the alcohol and not drinking anymore. And he says the exact same thing, that it's a fucking slippery slope. And another interesting thing that he says is that it runs deep in both sides of his family, which is the same for me. My father and my uh, grandfather on my mother's side, both were strong alcoholics. And the way that it starts to affect you, I did both at a very young age, the alcohol and the marijuana. And the way that it starts to affect you, like you say, into your older years, I was actually thinking about it today, the way, like you're saying, it goes from being in high school, college, or I never went to college, but, you know, the, that age period. And then you begin to go from hanging out and associating, drinking and having good times with your friends to you're just sitting at home drinking an 18 pack every night by yourself. You know what I mean? And it just kind of becomes one of those things. And um, it definitely, and then not only that, but I have two DUIs. And I got my first DUI when I was 18 and my second one when I was 24. And that, the way that that disrupted my life and my training and stuff like that at the time was like in such a negative way that I would definitely be much better off if obviously those things had never happened to me. My career would be so much further. I always think that like I would, I'd have so much more time in the gym. Like I said, if I didn't waste those nights, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday morning, you feel like shit and you don't want to get up and you go go to the gym and you lose reps and you lose time and you lose training sessions. You know, it's just so not worth it that it, it helps. It can help in so much way. I've toned down my drinking so much ever since I started doing CBD and eating at eating edibles as well as not just as smoking and smoking the cartridges and, you know, finding the right strains and different things like that to, uh, to help you out so yeah i could definitely speak on that for sure like i said it's funny you said it because it's a fucking slippery slope with the alcohol real quick and, and it's almost and it it's crazy it's crazy because it's like where like you said the 18 pack on your couch and it's almost like where did the time go because just yesterday you were at you know like the your senior year graduating party and well you know whatnot and then here you are you know in 20s trying to figure out where the time was lost and uh it, it like yeah slippery slopes the only way i can define it man and it's absolutely crazy and it's just adding on to what your experience was mine was polar opposite and i, I can't say that I'm, I'm regretful in that sense but when i first I, I actually was arrested for marijuana when i was in my mid-20s and it was you know delaware wasn't legal everything like that and so it prevented me from getting multiple jobs because it was on my record, had to go through the, you know, the drug classes, everything like that, being in the same, same classes as, you know, heroin addicts and, you know, and I'm not, I'm not better than anybody. Everybody, you know, has their struggles and I'm not to say that, but what I'm getting at is it's two kind of different realms in that sense. And drinking and driving seems to be everybody goes from the bar home. I mean, and it's okay. And the, the unfair situation and the stigma of the back and forth, it's just wild to me. It's crazy. And uh, I'm just really glad that cannabis is actually starting to take off. And I can't wait to see what it does in the future. And I'm glad it obviously helps you as well. Yeah. And besides, you know, legal trouble, like getting, like you're talking about getting caught with it and getting into some legal troubles and 
I know, like, when I was in high school, I know friends that got caught with, you know, marijuana and then lose their license for, like, two years was a thing in Florida for a while. So, mm-hmm. I think that's basically the main problems is that it'll lead you to is down that road of legalization problems. And, you know, we're starting to luckily get phased away from that. But, mm-hmm. yeah, the, the personal problems and things are, like you're saying, the, the you know, j- I, did, I remember when I did both my DUI classes, there were people in there for DUIs for marijuana. And I was like, how did you even get a DUI with marijuana? And they're like, oh, I basically was, you know, they just tacked on extra stuff onto my charges and said that I was high driving. And so I was like, how is high, being high driving and being drunk driving even the same? There's no, there's no comparison. <laughs> like, no, I, there's I not. Oh, so much more dangerous. So uh yeah yeah I, I know exactly what you're saying and uh it's definitely better <laughs> definitely a better and a brighter <laughs> the the grass is greener on this side in multiple ways than one but uh if you don't mind i do want to close it down with uh as i like to call a little final 10 count just uh one you know one word or not one word i'm sorry one choice or the other give you two options one or the other 10 of them cool right. so First one, half baked or pineapple express? I have to say half baked because that was a big one when I was younger. Bob Marley or Willie Nelson? Bob Marley. Sativa or indica? Mm, Sativa. Joe Rogan or Dave Chappelle? As far as comedian? Any which avenue you want to take. And honestly, I threw this one in because I was listening to their podcast before we were talking. <laughs> uh, I'll go with Joe Rogan. Rick and Morty or That 70s Show? Rick and Morty's like one of my favorite shows ever. <laughs> wake and Bake or a nice little weed nap? Uh, wake and Bake. Flower or Concentrate? Concentrate. Edibles or sublingual tinctures? Mm, edibles. I really enjoy getting the flavor of what. <laughs> After a fight, a fresh joint or a cold beer? I would have to take the joint over the beer. And final one, a fight that... <sighs> A fight card you're looking to get on and a fight that's going to be coming up soon. I had to throw in some fight questions here. Tyler Goodjohn and Luis Palomano, who are you taking? Oh, to be honest, going off of their last two performances, Tyler being against uh, Felony, going the distance with him and going to a a close, close decision and Obviously, Tyler Minos was the, I was on that card in Miami, was his dominant performance over Jim Allers, a guy that was picked to do the same, maybe go the distance with him and drag out a, and just got completely finished in the first round. I'd have to pick Palomino in that fight. I mean, I'd, it, I'd have to pick Palomino. I mean, he's just been on a tear ever since he fought Elvin and went the distance with Elvin, you, you know, Valley Flag, Jim. You know, I'd have to take Palomino. All right, man. Last thing. How can the fans keep up with you as far as fight news? How do you know anything coming up from you as well as all your sponsors? I know you have a plethora of them that uh, support you and your cannabis ways. So let's hear it, man. Yeah, yeah. I'll give a couple, a uh, few a shout out. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Noah S. Cutter. That's the one that I, I do. Uh, the management runs the Facebook page. I do all my stuff on Instagram. And I want to give a shout out to my sponsors, um, Mary Jane's House of Glass that sponsored me in my last fight, Turp House Clear that does my cars and my edibles, and you can get information from me on Instagram about their stuff. And uh, I want to say thanks to Training is Ritual is one of my top sponsors right now that does my clothes, and Fusion CBD, which is my CBD company, and they're my go-to. Those are all my tops and my... uh, THC based sponsors. I know there's some other sponsors out there, but uh, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna give them a shout out next time and uh, uh, just say thanks to everybody. And yeah, you can follow me there, man. I appreciate it, Adam. All right, Noah, man. I look forward to seeing you fight again. I appreciate you taking the time to talk cannabis with me. 
hopefully whenever we get to get up at a BKFC fight, you and I will split one when times are back to normal and whatnot. But uh, again, I really appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you fight. Thank you, brother. You have a good day, man. Enjoy the fight tonight. You too, man. There he goes. Noah Cutter, BKFC fighter. And he is another edition of Cannabis or My Marijuana Chronicles on behalf of my MMA news and brought to you by O2 Vape. For my man, Noah Cutter, I am Adam Chris. Thanks as always for tuning in and make sure you keep it locked to my MMA news.com for all your fight news. Needs.